My skin is burnt and craving hydration. Today I'm going to explain a fantasy, horror, and mystery film called Tigers Are Not Afraid. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. At the height of the drug war in Mexico, Estrella, a young student attends a local elementary school. On that day, their teacher assigns them to write their own version of a fairy tale. Estrella decides to write a story about a prince who wishes to be a tiger. Meanwhile, a street orphan named Shine awaits the perfect timing to steal valuables from people passing by. He sees a drunken Kako, a henchman of an infamous crime boss, and sets him as his target. While Kako is taking a piss, Shine steals his gun and iPhone from his pants. Still unnoticed, Shine aims the gun at Kako, but he is unable to shoot. Once Kako turns around, Shine hides in the dark and breaks into tears because of his miserable life. Back in the classroom, the school is disrupted by gunfire from outside, causing the kids to get down on the floor amid panic. To calm the poor Estrella, her teacher hands her three pieces of chalk which, according to her, will grant three of the fuck out of here, cut. Just like in fairy tales. The shootout finally subsides, and classes are suspended until further notice. On her way home, Estrella stumbles upon a dead body covered in a thick carpet in broad daylight, but she remains unfazed and continues to walk home. Unknowingly, the blood follows her in a thin line and traces all around her house. Estrella calls out to her mother several times, but she does not seem to be at home. She sits on the couch watching some television, where she finally notices the traces of blood surrounding her. Meanwhile, Shine reunites with his friends Pop, Tusi, and Moro, who are orphans as well. Their group is are the you, baby? Ah, oh, shit. And all of them grew up together in the streets. At bedtime, Moro, the youngest one, always asks Shine to tell him stories. Shine then tells him one about a tiger who preys on orphans. That same night, Estrella is still waiting patiently for her mother's arrival, but to no avail. She waits until the sun rises and I mean, clap. through the phone, but still, her mother is unresponsive. She sees Shine walking in the neighborhood from the balcony and waits for her mother until night falls. While waiting, she recalls when the two of them were still together, living happily despite their modest conditions. Estrella makes use of one of the three chalks she has and wishes for her mother to come back. Suddenly, she hears subtle whispers around the house that sound like her mother. A ghostly figure touches her from behind, frightening the little girl, so she spends the night outside. The following morning, sounds from inside the house awaken Estrella. She sees a boy in a tiger mask looting their house. She tries to stop him from stealing, eventually unmasking the thief, who happens to be shy. Before running away, Shine tells Estrella that her mother was taken by the Haskas, a human trafficking ring run by a gang. She refuses to believe him and chases him away. Estrella hears the same whispers again from the night before, and she runs outside out of fear. She sees the tiger mask from their balcony and decides to follow Shine's tracks. She eventually arrives at their hideout and sees the four orphans sharing a meal while they gather their collection of stolen things. They hear Estrella coming their way, but they warn her that she isn't welcome in their territory and tells her to go home. However, oh God! Estrella tells them that she is hungry and is insistent on staying with them. Shine tries to kick her out, but her cries gain sympathy from Pop. He encourages Shine to let the girl stay with them because she might get abducted by the Haskins. Yo! Stumble, my boy! Stumble! Blankets and a piece of biscuit. Estrella is still hungry, so scours through the trash looking for some food. Suddenly, a set of hands drag her. Her screams wake up Shine. He gets mad at her for being too loud and goes back to sleep. The following day, Shine tells Estrella to get up as Haskas are coming. A car arrives with men who are planning on capturing the kids. Kako and another man chase after them, so they hurriedly run through the neighborhood woods. Aw, shit. Of heights, but Shine helps her flee from the bad guys. Shine shoots the stolen gun at them, and Kako realizes that he was the one who stole his phone and weapon. In an empty alley, the two meet with Pop and Tusi, who inform Shine that the Haskas got more of, and his stuffed toy tiger was the only thing left behind. Shine is in a fit of rage, knowing that one of his closest friends is in great danger. When Estrella asks what happens to the ones they take, they tell her that the kids are taken to Chino to be chopped off, and then their body parts are sold. They also add that the gang is known to practice rituals, so they must have a deal with the devil. Shine is annoyed by Estrella's presence and blames everything on her. As the three walk away, Estrella says that she can make the Haskas disappear, grabbing their attention. Shine hands her the gun and makes her a deal. If she kills Kako, she can stay in their group. 
Not wanting to waste any time, the four of them arrive at Kako's house, where Estrella has second thoughts on doing the deed. After a bit of encouragement, she climbs up the wall and makes her way inside the house. The interior is dark, and she hears Kako in the living room watching the news. She gathers up all her courage and approaches from behind him. While aiming the gun at him, Estrella takes a piece of chalk and wishes that she didn't have to kill him. Surprisingly, she sees that Kako is already dead. She drops the weapon and it misfires. Not long after, she stumbles upon the house's back door, where numerous children are locked up in cages, including Moro. She sets every single one free, and they make their way outside so the four friends could reunite. Estrella approaches Shai, who is in disbelief that she made it out alive. She hands him back the weapon, but he walks away. The group returns to the hideout and celebrates their victory, but Shai is still in a cranky mood. He asks Estrella how she managed to pull off the deal, and she simply Fuck. says that she made a wish. Just then, the phone rings and Shine sees that a man named Tio is trying to reach him from Kako's phone. He turns it off and walks away while Estrella celebrates with the other children. Later that night, Estrella wakes up and sees his ex coming out of the room. She then gets another vision of her mother. Through an empty cup, a voice warns her that some people are coming for her. Estrella insists that she didn't kill Kako. The voice then says that the one who killed him is looking for you, and she must bring the man to her. With the Haskas on the lookout for them, the children decide to pack their stuff and look for another home. Along the way, they pass by another gang's territory led by Brian to drop the other kids who are part of his gang. They are intimidated by the older members, but Shine remains unshaken, informing them that Estrella killed Kaka. They soon find an abandoned mansion that would serve as their new hideout, and the group is amazed by how big the place is. While alone in her room, the trail of blood from earlier follows Estrella into the hallways. As she cleans up, the blood drenches the entire room. As Estrella sees the blood stain soaking up the walls, she draws a line in the entrance using the chalk to prevent the blood from entering. From there, she sees Shine sobbing from a distance and goes to him for consolation. Mm. The phone rings again and they receive a call from Tia, who is furious about finding out that the kids are behind his brother's death. The two of them realize that Brian snitched on them, putting them in even more danger. Shine reveals that he keeps the phone because it contains the only picture of his missing mother. Kako took the picture right after kidnapping her. That afternoon, the children find a box of soccer balls and decide to have fun with it. They play soccer, write jersey numbers on their back, and decorate the balls to pass the time.